Evening and a warm welcome to the Breathe Sport Football Show. We are live again for another hour of uh, hopefully lively, informative, educational and occasionally entertaining debate on all things football. We're actually at Hotel Football tonight, so appropriately enough in the shadow of the towering edifice that is Old Trafford and of course Manchester United, uh, who play a bit of football there, might get a mention in the next 60 minutes or so. Appropriately enough as well, four guests alongside me tonight all have a connection to the red half of Manchester. A couple of them started there, a couple of them ended up there, it's fair to say, Rio Ferdinand. Uh, the birthday boy, Andy Cole, Thank you. <laughs> Danny Higginbottom and Robbie Savage, all ready to talk a bit of nonsense and a bit of football. Lots to get through, let's get started. Right, the audience are in and uh, await with bated breath uh, a bit of chat. Let's start with um, the record breaker, shall we? Mr Rooney, 50 up, and uh, obviously more to come, one would think, when injury and opportunity allow Rio. Has he um, cemented himself into not just the record book, but perhaps the, the status that goes with England's record goal scorer? Yeah, I think without doubt, I think you can't dispute that he's, uh, he has to be put up there as one of the best England players ever. Um, everyone will always talk about the World Cup winning team and the players that, that were there and that's inevitable, that's, that's a fact. But in terms of someone, their personal records and their achievements, to hit 50 goals at any level, let alone international football, no matter what team you play for, is a, is a big achievement. And I think he's a, he's a worthy uh, player to be held in, in them pedestals. And I think he, he would have wanted to play better at times um, in tournaments and stuff like that. But at the same time, Especially the last campaign, he was, his goals got England to that tournament as well. So this guy, I mean, he's, he's, when the pressure's on, he's been able to produce, especially in the qualifiers in the tournaments. As I said, maybe he would have been asking for a bit more for himself, but no doubt, fantastic top player. As a goal scorer, Andy, would you describe him as a goal scorer or as an out-and-out -out striker? What, what words would you use? Uh, it's a tough one. I think Wayne, Wayne, Wayne scored outstanding goals, um, like, like any centre forward or as whatever you want to call it, you know, the number 10. It's just a number for me, but um, you know he'll get chances to score goals. We will go for a bad patch when he's not scoring goals, you know. But take nothing away from what he's achieved in his career so far. He's been fantastic, and that really touched on there to score 50 goals for England. That's, that's not easy. That's not easy because there's a hell of a lot of pressure playing for England. You know, expectations are a lot higher than they should be. So if he doesn't play particularly well at times, you know, he, he takes a lot of the grunt, grunt of it. But yeah, I, I think he's, he's done extremely well for England. He's done super for Manchester United as well. So the, f the thing that is <coughs> big for me as well, he wasn't necessarily a goal scorer before. No. Mm -hmm. When he came to United, he was all round. He was like an action man, running back to the left back area, making tackles all over the pitch. And he just blended over a period of time into someone who just thought about scoring goals. And I think when he got that little sniff of there's records there to kind of hit, he really then went into like, right, I'm going to put myself in, in the positions and, and really hone his craft on the training pitch. You see him day in, day out, doing extra shooting and stuff like that. So he's, um, it's not by chance that he's where he is. Mm. When you think about some of the company Danny he's, he's kept uh, in an England shirt, in terms of those that have hit a huge number of goals, most of them were and are considered out-and-out -out strikers. Think of Greaves and mm. Lineker and, um, oh, yeah. yeah, almost all of them really, with the exception probably of, of Bobby Charlton himself, I suppose, were out-and-out -out poachers. So Rooney has perhaps changed over the years he, he probably has but you know like the lads have mentioned you know for you to be at Manchester United for such a long time to be one of the first names on the team sheet you have to be a special player and you know he's got he's England's all-time top goal scorer but he's probably going to end up Manchester United's all-time top goal scorer so if, if if people are saying that you know he's, he's not as great as what things make out to be I think it's it's, it's a myth because for you to have done that for Manchester United then to do it for England is unbelievable and, and for the amount of time he's done it for as well and what will be interesting to see over the next year or two is is how he evolves as a as a centre forward does he drop back does he end up becoming a midfielder because we've seen him play in that position before and obviously Rio can probably say more but he seems to have an eye for a pass as well so as he gets older will he start to move back in the team as we've seen with some fantastic and great players over the years do you think um, he has a preference Robbie does he no, no idea <laughs> to be honest, um, um, what I will say about Rooney, watching that documentary on the TV the other night, it, you know, 
we forget how good he was. I think the goal against Bolton, I don't know if you played in that game, and Ronaldo got the ball and he sprinted the whole yeah, length yeah. of the pitch. And, it over the keeper. You know, it was an amazing finish. But that said to me how good he was and are his best days behind him, you know? That's what I would ask the next question about Wayne Rooney, because he was so good. You know, and as Real says, to, to be as good as he has been to play in Manchester United for that long, but the question is now, are his best days behind him? Because he was so good. I don't think he can, he can play like he did in, in them great no. teams you were in. He's not playing with as good players now, that's fair. But his goal-scoring record's unquestionable. And the big debate they have, is Wayne Rooney world-class? You know, that is the big debate, what is world-class? You know, would Wayne Rooney get, at the peak of his career, have got in the world eleven? I think Rio would have. Um, would Rooney? I'm not I think so there sure. was a time when he would have. I think now, I think he, he's, you're, you're right, I think his most potent, most dangerous, most fearsome days um, are probably a, a couple of years gone. Um, but I think he's, he could leave a legacy now, it's a chance for him, if he's got that in his mind and the people close to him, where he could, like Giggs, like Giggs yeah. and say, right, I've, there's a different role for me in this team. I've got the records now. I've got where I wanted to get from when I've come through the door and now I'm going to sh change and show people that I'm not just a, f a striker, a great striker, a goal scorer, I'm a, an all-round footballer. Because Giggsy was a flying winger for years, yeah. the best in the world, <coughs> and then became the same like John Barnes. Mm. Them two players, some, John Barnes was my best favourite player as a kid. He finished as a centre midfielder dictating games and I, I think Rooney's got <coughs> enough football intelligence to do that. You well, share I, that view? Yeah, I, I do, because I, I, if, if you look at his, his Manchester United career, he's played everywhere. Mm. He's played on the left, he's played in midfield, he's played on the right. Now, I think anyway, Salix Ferguson asked him to play, Wayne played in the end, you know, and at times to the detriment of his career, you know, but he still gave 100%, he's still putting performances. I was watching the Champions League game the other day, the one in uh, Moscow, and he picked the ball up just outside his own penalty box, ran to the halfway line and pinged yeah. the ball out to Ronnie. Yeah, Ronnie got it, crossed it, Owen Hargreaves headed it, and Pe Petr Cech kept it out. That was Wayne Rooney, you know, we, we don't see that of Wayne Rooney anymore, you know, but that, that doesn't mean that all of a sudden he's a bad player. You get to a certain age and the things you want to do, you can't do. You like to say no. Yeah, so <laughs> you refine your game. I've been there, I was there. Yeah, exactly. I've been there. You, know, you refine your game, which I, I think he is doing at the moment, and I think he'll become a better player by it for sure. He, he could play for as long as he wants. Robbie touched on something there. He says... Perhaps the team he's now part of isn't the team he mm -hmm. was part of. That might affect what happens to him and the club he plays yeah, for. Yeah, it's there's no question about it. I think if you, the, the problem that you have with all great teams is when great players go, how do you replace them? I think we, we look at Manchester United. You know, I'm a big Manchester United supporter, and over the years, you see players like Roy Keane go, still not been replaced. Ryan, Ryan Giggs not been replaced. You know, for me, when 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 a football club allows someone like Rio, Vidic, Evra. Giggs, who was retiring, to all go in the same summer. You're not, you're not only losing great, great players, but you're losing you know, proper leaders. And I think that's something that Manchester United are, are short of in certain degrees. Now, so what happens is Wayne Rooney is, is a definite leader, there's no question about it. But I think that his life and, and his game would be a lot easier if he had characters, the likes of Rio, around him that can, that can help him out along the way. Because I think at times that he's, all the pressure falls on him. Whereas like the, the great Manchester United teams that I've been fortunate enough to play against over the years. You know, when we used to play in, at Stoke, when we first got promoted at Stoke, we used to think we could bully every team. You know, the big clubs would come and we'd bully the life out of them, maybe get a draw, maybe get a win. Man United turned up. They could mix it with the best of them. And I think that's the problem at the moment. When you haven't got that blend, sometimes you can't bring the best out in players. And I think the players that have been lost over the last three, four years is something that is very, very difficult to replicate and bring players of that calibre back into the team. Are they a team at the moment then that are progressing, as you see, or in transition, unclear about what direction they're in? What, well, how we do you see this, it? We did a brief sports show at the start of the season. Mm. I said United to win the league. You did. Um, and when they were top a couple of weeks ago, I was buzzing. Um, <laughs> um, and I'm still hoping they could <laughs> get to the top. But, you know, that, I think the big test for them was against Arsenal. I think if they'd have won that game, people would have thought, oof, they've got a real chance here. But they got battered in the first half, 3 0, all over the place. Second half, they were better. Um, so, you know, I've got to say now, you're looking at, I think Arsenal could challenge City. But it's open. You know, if United put a run together, they've got every chance, really, because it's so open this, this yeah. year. And anyone has, but we've got to be brutally honest. The Premiership is not very good. No. It's not very good. 
as, as a spectacle, yeah, it's entertaining. There's always going to be goals. There's always going to be all that kind of stuff. But if we're looking in general as a league, what the Premiership was at, the way it's at now, for me, it's not very good. It, it's also the presence on the pitch. You know, you look at, like Robbie's just said, you look at Manchester United, I think we're three down after 19 minutes. And that's where you go back to the characters that you have on the pitch. You know, if, if the Manchester United that, that I've played against and supported over the last 20, 30 years, there's no way that they would have gone to the Emirates, gone 1-0 down and gone 2-0 down and gone 3-0 down. And that's what I'm talking about, the characters on the pitch. You can have all these top players. I don't, I don't but, know about that, Dan. I remember when we went 3-0 down at White Hart Lane. Mm -hmm. Have you come back and won 5-3? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> the, biggest thing so yeah. Characters to come back. <laughs> the biggest thing for me is I watch, it, you know, I watch United play, I don't think the players look happy. I don't think they enjoy themselves. You know, I watch the teams these guys were in. OK, they're the winning. It's different when you're winning. Of course, you enjoy yourself. But I'm watching them thinking, are they happy? Are they, they, they mean, I, I'm not sure. I, was, I, I think about, like, Di Maria. Mm. Like, when Di Maria comes to Man United, that's, like, a genuine world-class player. He's at, he's at Madrid. Real Madrid, won the Champions League, one of the best, probably, two or three players in that team with Ronaldo that season. Comes to Man United and you think, whoa. The first six or so games, he was unbelievable. You thought, whoa. He's going to light this place up for a couple of years now. Mm. And he just, he just plummeted. And what you put that down to, I don't know, is it because he's Louis van Gaal likes his team to play, individuals to play within a framework, and you can't deviate out of the rules that are within that team? Um, does the player then start second-guessing when he gets the ball, do I pass it, do I run with it because I, don't want, to do, I want to please the manager? Because every player, when you play, you, you want to please the manager. You want to do what he asks and what he wants. Mm. But at the same time... For instance, someone like Ferguson that we played under, you was allowed freedom in the final third. As a defender, I remember I played one of my first games and I, I, I came in thinking I've got to play a certain way, so I was trying to do these f fancy balls. And one of them got cut out of West Brom and Jason Kumas, so Jason Kumas yeah, yeah. went and banged one in the bottom corner. Half time comes and the manager went, don't you ever think you're playing that pass again. Stop, <laughs> just pass the ball simple until you get some confidence back in your system. But. As a defender, I can get through a game like that because you can just play the easy ball to the fullback, etc., and get your way through a game and get your confidence back. As a striker, you need to be able to play with a free spirit, be able to go in there, have some fairy tale when you're game. And I don't know, Coley would be able to tell you more about that type of thing, but I just feel that strikers and midfielders and forwards need to be able to go out there and really express themselves without thinking, what is he going to be saying? And it feels looking at that that's what it looks like at the minute. Miserable players? Is that what you're seeing? I mean, you, you know, you're only miserable if you're not playing particularly well or you're not happy in the frame what you're playing in, whatever the system. I think I, I can only, you can only look back to when you was playing in, in the Manchester United team and people was looking at the Manchester United team and said they enjoy their football. They enjoy their football. I remember Alan Hansen many years ago said you can't win anything with kids. And those, those kids were energetic and everything. They had a laugh and joy when they winning the championship that season. But any, any good Manchester United team will always play with a certain way, smile on their face, and grind out results. We'll always grind out results. You know, you call it, call it Fergie time, whatever it may be. It could be Fergie time, but if you look at your personnel on the pitch, that's what gets your results. And we're fortunate to play in a team that always seem to get late goals. But that's, that's the mentality of Manchester United, was never to give up. You know, first minute, last minute, you go to the final whistle. And that's what won your games, that's what won your championships at Manchester United. See, it's interesting that you've, you've talked a few of you about playing for a manager, playing with a smile on your face, enjoying your football. Uh, I wonder whether the way the business of football has gone and the, the power that players have inherited through the, the changes that have come in the last few years, whether there's a pinch point coming between what players want, what perhaps coaches want, what fans expect. I think, I think it's interesting what, what Ria's saying about, about Di Maria. He came over here, you know, he was, he's just got man of the match in Champions mm -hmm. League final. Is the finding moment and the beginning of the end for him at Manchester United was Leicester away, getting beat 5-3. He was unbelievable in that game. The goal he scored when he's gone through and then he scooped it over Schmeichel. It was incredible. But the team got beat 5-3. And I just think after that, Van Hall pulled the reins in a bit and decided that, OK, we've got to play like Di Maria, but to enable him to fit into the way I want to play, I've got to put the shackles on him. And you can't do it with a player like him. And it's, it's a real crying shame. I, I was gutted when he went in the summer because I just think there's so much from him. There's no way that... A play doesn't turn bad in the space of a few months. And I, I just felt that he was hindered to a certain extent. He couldn't do what he wanted to do when he got on that football pitch. He, he would have graced the Premier League for plenty of years to come. So is that the nub of the problem, do you think, Robbie, that the manager here wants control and the players under his command want some freedom? 
Well, I think Rio's at the nail on the head with the freedom in the final third. You know, Manchester out when we've played against them teams, the ball goes into the final third, you're thinking, oh no, they're going to score every time they attack, they're going to score. You look at this United team, you know, Depay, you know, Memphis in the Premier League hasn't done it, you know. Matt has done okay, hasn't he? I think Matt has done better because he can play to a structure. If you look at him on that right-hand side, when he went to Liverpool last year, he was brilliant. You know, that first goal he got, you know, he's not quick, but he stayed in his structure and got a goal. That's why I think Matter plays, because, you know, Chelsea didn't work... You know, I don't know why Chelsea got rid of him. He was player of the year two years running, wasn't he? Did he work hard not for Chelsea, but he's come here and seemed to have worked hard and stayed in the structure. You know, Memphis, he'll stay in the structure. You know, so I'm with Rio in the final third. I just, I think you know what's coming at you. I, I don't think anybody going past people, doing a bit of magic, being brave. That's what my United players do. You know, they're brave and they take risks. And I don't see it. I don't see it in the final third. One, one of the big things is as well, when, when you used to play against Manchester United, you used to feel as though, I don't know if you felt the same, Robbie, you used to think the pitch was huge. You couldn't get, any, you couldn't, you couldn't get anywhere near them. And I mean to the point of you'd be chasing shadows. You, you know, they used to hate, used to put you into a false sense of security. You used to come to Old Trafford, first 15, 20 minutes, we'd have loads of the ball and things like that and be thinking, Nice and comfortable out. They're not as good as what as what um, as what they're supposed to be. Be three now after thirty minutes, and that's that's the difference now. And I think that it's one thing being you know congested when you haven't got the ball, but when you've got the ball, you want to be expansive. And I think that when you've got a player like Memphis, he's playing on the left hand side, but he's right footed. That's music to a fullback's ears because he's running into the midfield areas. I think the reason now Matter is starting to shine a bit, and he did it at times last season. I think Martial's had a big imprint on Mata because Martial loves drifting over to the right hand side he takes the left sided centre back and the left back back with him and that's why Mata's now starting to get the joy in the middle and I think at times Manchester United they've been, they've been compact out of possession which is fine but too many times in possession they don't change the fence to attack like they used to do it used to be incredible you used to play against them and one minute you could have had a corner the next minute it's in the back of your net and that's a big difference now the, the, the pace and the decision making for some of the players and like I say, Manchester United have been so fortunate over the years to have some unbelievable plays that, in my opinion, a lot of them have never been replaced, and it's very difficult to do that. But like I say, I just feel that at times when they've got the ball, it's, it takes longer than what it should do, and they've got the plays in that team that are able to create danger. I just think it's, it's Van Gaal's way of playing. It's his style of playing football. Mm. If you look at, he's a slow, it's like methodical, patient build-up. And until you see the pass, you think it's really going to get through the other team, you don't play it. And you look at the, the, the Dutch team in the World Cup, they didn't play particularly well in a lot of them games. Robin van Persie didn't have a good tournament. He scored two great goals mm. and everyone thought, oh, he would, they were unbelievable. They'd done better than they'd overachieved as a team. But in terms of the way they played, and the difference with them, they had someone like Robin. Robin yeah. Robin's a guy, he looks like to me, he don't care what the manager says, I'm going to go and do my thing <laughs> and I'll get you results. Yeah, I think he's so, proved that, haven't he? Exactly. So, and, I, and I think he, they had someone like him who was running in behind the whole time. And that's why Martial could be a big difference for this team, is that pace. Rooney, we spoke about before, isn't the same lethal in terms of explosiveness. So as a defender, you think I can push up against him and he's not going to really threaten me behind as much and condense the space in, in the midfield. And then it makes it hard for the matters and the, the like to get on the ball with any time. Martial, you see at Arsenal, we didn't win, but Martial, them two centre-halves, just still come off the pitch thinking I was lucky actually today that he didn't bag one of his chances and he took me to the cleaners a couple of times one-on-one -on -one, and the game could be changed and be different. So they've got that different option now. I think looking at the team as well, you're relying on four players to score because the way he plays with the two holding, Schweinsteiger, Carrick or Snyder, they don't get goals. Mm -hmm. the, the back four don't get goals unless from a set piece. So you're relying on four players to get a goal on the team. Mm. The teams they played in, they come from all angles mm. of the pitch. Mm. You know what I mean? So that's what you, you think. If you can stop them four, mm. Carrick, Schweinsteiger, the great players, and, and Snyder aren't going to run past you, are they? So you can, you can just sit there thinking, right, just look after the one and the three. Nobody else is going to come forward. Luke Shaw was doing great before he got injured. You know, we wish him all the best. Great, yeah. great lad. He was doing great. I thought he was the best left back in the league when his injury happened. Damien, you know, he's put him to the left side. He keeps changing around. So if you can look after the four, four good players, a midfielder's not going to run past you. Yeah, no, I think now in, in the modern day game, if you haven't got pace up front, you're going to struggle. Yeah. You're going to struggle. And uh, Marcel coming in, the way he's coming, the way he's taken to the Premiership, Everyone's talking about him because he's different. Because it's not what Man United had last season. It's not what Man United had the season before. Now they've got a kid who's prepared to run in behind, prepared to pick the ball up, run at people. And people are saying, he's different. Well, he is different to what you've had for the past two, three years. 
But before that, that's all I've seen, was people picking the ball up, running at people, going past people, playing that pace. When I, I first came on May United, Kinchelskis on the right, oh my, what a dream he was. And the gigs on the left are oh, ridiculous, Sharpie. I don't know, he's got so many goals. <laughs> I mean, you, you look at things like that, you look at the wing play from those guys, but obviously before Andre left and Beck's coming to the team, you look at the wing play, you're going to score goals because they're going to get crosses in the box. And if you watch Man United now, like we touched on there, very methodical. Let's keep it, let's keep, keep it. In the Champions League, lovely. Champions, that, that's what Champions League football is all about, keeping the ball, we playing the best teams. But the Premiership, the hustle and bustle, everyone gets behind the ball, OK, we get 10 behind the ball, especially at Old Trafford. We keep them happy and we hit them on the counter break now. If you come watch Man United now, they get hit on the counter break so many times because mm. that's what teams are prepared to do. Mm. Do you make them contenders this season then? For the league? No. I said at the beginning of the season, I didn't think they'd, I thought they'd finish top, top four, top three. But I had a bit of confidence before the Arsenal game. I took my boys to that game and their football kits, they were being told to put the kits away and, that, and I was going, you, you're top of the league, you can do what you want and you're cool. <laughs> but by 20 minutes in, they were dead, they were on the floor, they were finished. <laughs> <laughs> Zipped up their tracks and everything. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, they were asking for Sanchez shirts, but um, no, they were... Um, <laughs> no, I just... Like we said before, when you play against like, teams, when you look at the team sheet, the team sheet comes in from the, from the, from the referee's room, and there were, there were teams in the, back in the days where you go, oh no. Or this is going to be a tough game. This is like Robin, Duff, Drogba are playing today. They're, they're, not one of them are out. We thought Drogba or we thought Robin might not play. They're all playing. Right, we've got to be on it. With this Man United team, I don't know if there's any players. Marshall now is, 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 is that guy. But where you look at the team sheet and go, he's going to hurt us. If we give him a bit too much time, he can hurt us. We've, and and pace in today's game is something that is just like, it's a godsend. You got pace as a defender. I don't want to play against against pace. Even in, in, when I was in my prime, I was quick. I'd still want a player who I, I know where he is, and I can put my hands on him and move him about. I don't want someone like like a Coley or someone like that who wants to run in behind the whole day and make my life a misery. Marshall's that guy, and, I, and he's not going to do it on his own. He's going to need more other players, but it's a great asset to have. Of course, talking of of, of wingers, if you like, um, in the recent Rooney documentary, uh, Ronaldo did talk about possibly playing with his mate again one day, which... In America. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that might disappoint a few fans oh, in this oh, neck oh, of the woods. They were, they were hoping yeah. and dreaming um, that he, he, he could end up in a red shirt again one day. Not for me. No. Not for me. I, I, I would be very surprised. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of scenario like um, the Ramos one. You know, yeah, I'd love to come back to Manchester United. You know, Ramos, I'd love to, yes, I'm going to go to Manchester United, but really Real Madrid sort me out and I'll sign and then he gets sorted out by Real Madrid and Man United's not mentioned anymore and I think Ronnie's basically saying yeah I would consider it but Ronnie now leave Real Madrid where he was always wanting to go to the mentality Latin lifestyle beach good weather to come out to Manchester rain and that mm -hmm. I'm not sure Ronnie really wants to do it I know? think the biggest thing about it he's actually c competing to win the league every year there yeah. and the Champions League the Holy Grail for him is the Champions League. Does he see himself doing that immediately? He hasn't got time to waste. A transitional period, he hasn't got time to wait. So that's, that ends the, the conversation. Also, for me. the big question would be you know, we've talked about the final third, and obviously Ronaldo is a free spirit. Mm. You know, so we talked about Di Maria, you know, didn't quite do it here. Why? So, you know, I think I might have to change the manager if Ronaldo was to come back because looking at the way they play, in the final third, you know what he's like, we lose the ball, mm. throw his arms in the air, great play, great play, but would he fit into a Van Gaal team? But you see that now, Sam, I mean, look, at people are questioning Ronaldo at the moment, aren't they? Yeah. Is he yeah. come to the end of his, I mean, his great spell? You know, he's not doing this, he's not doing that. And when you get to a certain level, people are always going to question you. But what, what he's achieved in his career is absolutely phenomenal. Was it 501 goals? <laughs> From it's it's unbelievable. You don't get that in Sunday football. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. crazy. You know, but uh, to come back to Manchester United, shirt sales will go up ridiculous, definitely. I think it'll pay for itself. But I would be very, very surprised. If you had a big enough... I mean, Ed Woodward's talked about having to spend big mm. every window yeah. to try and maintain and progress the club he, he serves here. Um, if you had that size of checkbook, where would you go? What, what do you Manchester United need? Would they, would they... I think 
I think the spine of the the spine of the team. <clears throat> I think Still. you don't. You, you're only as good as the spine of your team. I think if you look at all great teams, you know the goalkeeper, the two centre backs, your central midfielders, and your centre forwards. And I think if you look at Manchester United, you've got De Gea, <clears throat> who in my opinion is, I think he's the best goalkeeper in the world. You've got Mar Martial, you don't know what he's going to be. You know, he's got the potential to be anything. Smalling, I think now he's, he's starting to take, he's taken a lot of things on board now. I think what you saw with Smalling last year was that his pace was getting him out of trouble. Whereas now, a lot of times you're watching a game, you don't know whether he's quick or not, because his positioning's a lot better. You know, from whether he's learning things from Rio or... Well, from when Vidic was there and he's taken all them things on board but for me I look at the central midfield area I think Carrick's been a phenomenal player for Manchester United I think Schweinsteiger's have been a great signing but I just think the spine of the team does need to be stronger with, with up, up and coming players that are of the mentality to be able to control a team like Manchester United because you can have all these players on the outside of the spine of your team but for me if those, if those segments aren't performing it doesn't matter what the rest are doing either side Mm. So you could have a similar debate about several English teams and actually in Europe thus far this season probably what we've watched ourselves have been witness to sometimes at the side of the pitch with the coverage has been disappointing hasn't it? Wondered how well, big I've, the watched, I've, I've done Chelsea um, and they breezed past Maccabi Tel Aviv and I've done Man City and Munch and Gladbach and, and I've done Munch and Gladbach's first game and they lost against Sevilla 3-0 and they got battered but City went there and Munch and Gladbach were brilliant for 60 minutes and then to be fair mm. to City though you know they showed great character come back and won that game but you know, with, you know, we talk about Premier League and, and, and foreign players in the Premier League. I watched West Brom against Crystal Palace last, the last oh, Premier dear. League season. There were 17 British players on the pitch. It was the worst game I've ever seen. You know, so I, it was. So I think the input of foreigners is, uh, you know, needs the Premier League because it was the worst stand of game I've ever seen. And there were 17 British players on the pack. I, I think That's another debate. I think one of the things we'll get to it. Yeah. I think one of the things we're losing as well though is what made England successful in the Champions League. If you look at I think from two thousand and eight to two thousand and twelve, I think we had four finalists or five finalists and two of the teams, two thousand and eight was Chelsea and Manchester mm. United. So I think what, what we're doing along the way and I think it's becoming evident in British clubs now is that we're trying to follow the European teams. But that's that's not what this country was, was built on. If you look at Manchester United 99 arguably def well the best team in Europe at the time 2005 Liverpool winning the Champions League were not the best team in Europe 2008 you could argue about it Chelsea I think 2012 not the best team in Europe but I think what we're, what we're starting to lose and what we have lost over, over the few years recently we've lost what made British teams good to be able to, to dig in to be able to grind out results as well as having them flair players scattered around you know, Manchester United came from behind in 99 to win. Liverpool came from behind 2005. You know, 2008, you forget about that one because it's two English clubs. Chelsea came from behind as well. And arguably, none of them were favourites in the final. And I just think that a lot of the times, now English clubs go behind. And that mentality that we used to have in England, which was we dig in, we grind it out, and then we go again and we make sure we're not out of this game. I think that's going. And that was something that set... The English clubs, I think, apart from some of the major European clubs, why we were so successful yeah, in Europe. I, I think you look at them teams you just mentioned there. Each and every one of them teams that you mentioned that got to the final or won the Champions League mm -hmm. had genuine world-class players, mm -hmm. and that's the, you could rely on. So, mm -hmm. for instance, United, the team I played in in 2008, we didn't play brilliant football in Champions League at all. We we pl we played against the best teams that we've said right, they're, 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 we can go toe to toe with these. Or we can say, right, let's sit back a little bit, not on the edge of our box, but we'll sit back, come bring them on to us. And we know we've got Ronaldo, Rooney, Tevez, Saha when he comes on, etc., who will blow these teams away on the counter-attack. And we don't mind waiting until 89th minute to do it. So when you've got players like that at your disposal, you can change your tactics. The teams nowadays, they play exactly the way they play in the Premier League in Europe. Yep. And they can get away with making mistakes and, and sending six, seven players forward gung-ho football in the Premier League which makes it the most exciting league in the world yeah. but when you go into the Champions League and you do that and you lose the ball you will be exposed and punished at the other end when you lose the ball because it's, and, yeah, and it's a, lot, also, a lot of teams all, are better players yeah exactly yeah. the standard in the Champions League is better and you, people say to me I was with a taxi driver today asking me the same question and he said oh, what about Barcelona they're not great at the back what about Bayern Munich they're not great at the back but they've had the ball for 89% of the time yeah. And your legs have gone, mm. and they're dictating the whole play of the game. When they lose the ball in your final third in the box or around the box, their forward players 
become the best defensive players on the pitch mm. and they win the ball back straight away. So the, the centre last is never having to run back towards their goal. Whereas ours, we're naive. Not set up to be able to win the ball early. And then you get punished. City, that's why City have been hammered for the last three, four years in the Champions League and probably they, they'll, they'll do well to get out of the group again this time, I think. Which is a head scratcher because the Premier League as a clearly as a product is highly successful, but the the, the, the money it generates and the clubs therefore have the power to compete with the best in Europe, and yet seems to be going backwards. You've just touched on it, the money they generate. But that, that, that doesn't mean that the money the Premiership generates, does that mean the best players are in England? No. Remember, when the Premiership first started, a few years into Premiership, all the best foreigners were virtually in England, by the way. No, there was no talk of Spain, Germany, Italy. And everyone wanted to kind of wiggle them. Yeah, the financial rewards were very good, but the Premiership was fantastic. Now, any top player now who plays in England wants to play abroad all of a sudden. It's all changed again. You know, we struggle in Europe because we're not as good as the European players, the way they play, the way they play in Europe. I said, uh, do quite a bit of stuff for BT. I'm watching the games. I'm watching Bayern Munich play the other day. I'm saying to myself, this is a different kind of football I'm watching. Like watching someone play FIFA? Yeah. It's a joke. It's, 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 it's unbelievable. It, it was, I'm saying to myself, nah, this. I watch Wolfsburg play as well. I'm saying to myself, nah, this is totally different. You know, to how they play on a Saturday or in Germany, to how they play in the Champions League, you try and say, so, you flip down its head, you watch any, England te any English team play exactly the same way. You know, 100 miles an hour, whatever it may be, can't do this, can't do that, get caught out, and everyone complains about, oh, we're not as good as we... No, we're not. You're not. We, we had our dominant period when we kept getting to the European Cup finals and all the English teams dominant. Football moves on. Now the Spanish and now the Germans are dominating. It's for us now to get back to that level, and the only way we can get back to that level is starting to get, if you're going to do it, is get the best foreign players to come back to England and play in England. And that, that's the way I look at it. It does go in cycles, though, yeah. like you said. It goes in cycles. The, the Italian teams had their time. The English teams, the Spanish teams, the German teams have done well with Dortmund and Bayern Munich over a period. So we've just got to hope that our time comes back again. Because mm. you look at a coach like Arsene Wenger, who has been around a long time and mm. obviously built the dynasty yeah. that Arsenal now is. It's his team, no question. Of that's mm. his club, really. And yet his team looked way off the pace this season. Don't look but, able to cope with the demands of European football, which is strange. I think, I think the thing is when you... When you look at the Premier League, Arsenal for me are one of the most exciting teams to watch going forward. I think that they're, they're unbelievable. But Arsenal have probably missed, have probably missed the same character probably since a Vieira went or a Petit went. You know, that that real strong centre back leader, the real strong defensive yes. midfielder. Yeah, you're at your Adams type character. Then midfield, you've got your Vieira, you've got your Petit's players like that. But where are they? How do you replace them players? I, I, don't, I don't think you can go no, for like, like you Manchester get United you, lost you Roy Keane. I don't think you can go out and find another Roy Keane. You can't, can't find another Paul Scholes. You can't find a Ronaldo. You've got to find something different that will help you still yeah. get to them same levels. It's hard. Man United replaced Roy Keane with, with Michael Carrick. Never been the same type of player. But is he as effective? In my book, I think he's almost as effective yeah, in a I, different way. I but you, you say that, Rui. Really. I think Man United were very, very fortunate in order to have Rubble, mm. Incy. And then Roy to have three versus the same kind of players, same leadership qualities, same mentality. To have three of those best players in your football club at one given stage, you turn and say, so, wow, we're lucky, by the way. Mm. Because it's all fantastic players. You know? And then, like I said, in the end, Man United have had to move away from that because you can't replace another Roy Keane with another Roy Keane. Because if you could, you've got all the other clubs wanting them as well. <laughs> you know? And that's when it becomes a battle. So you go away from it. You know, Michael Carrick comes in. I'm, I'm a big fan of Michael Carrick. I think he's been a super player for Manchester United. Totally different to Roy. Totally different, but doing a job to sort of effect it. The, defending's becoming an afterthought now in football. Though. I think, you know, you, you, look at, you look at the players that have, that have come through. You know, more often than not now, you know, 10, 15 years ago, not even that long ago, first and foremost, you wanted your centre-back to be able to defend. If I'm going to spend X amount of money as a manager, first and foremost, can he defend? Now it seems to be first and foremost, can he play out from the back? You know, and, and Arsenal, for me, have been one of the prime examples over the years. They've been, they've been so open at home to the counter-attack from the lesser teams. You know, we saw West Ham do it, we saw Olympiacos do it. They're the dominant force. Opposition sit back, know that they haven't got that. As in terms of the leader figure, I'm on about the one that gets, gives the instructions out. If a fullback's flying forward, listen, you stay in here, we keep our shape, let them get on with it up there. And they've been so vulnerable to counter-attacks, and no disrespect to teams that they shouldn't have been vulnerable to. And I think that's something that 
if you look at the European teams, you look at your likes of Bayern Munich, teams like that, the Italian teams, they can still defend when they need to. You know, Barcelona, as, as, as Rio said, they don't have to defend that much because they're constantly having the ball. But I think if we have centre-backs in this country and we have defenders, there's still some very good ones. But I think if you look at when Rio was playing, I think if you look at Coley's days, the defenders aren't what they used to be in this country, in my opinion anyway. I don't, I don't think the leaders, I think first and foremost, they all want to fly forward. And even your centre-halves want to get the ball and start playing it when first and foremost you are a defender. And I think that's a real detriment to the team yeah, as well. You, you touched on the Arsenal. I, I'll be honest, I don't know what Arsenal are. I mm. really don't. I think going football, absolutely fantastic. Play super football. But when you touch on leaders, if you look at the Arsenal team, I, I watch ours and say to myself, right, if it gets a bit tough here and I've got to dig in, I've got to leave, leave some on someone, who's got me? I look around the Arsenal team, there's not many. There's not many. Man United team, if you're in a Man United team, you know, if, if it gets a bit sticky, it gets a bit, you know, you've got to leave your foot in every now and then. You look around your team and say, right, I'll have them in the trenches. And Arsenal, Arsenal players never seem to dig each other out. You know, the concealer goal is like, it's going to take centre or whatever, maybe. Top teams, you've got to dig each other out. You have to, you've got no option. That means you're just going to accept it, go in the dressing room, oh, OK, we'll get on with it. Next week, we're better. Same thing happens, oh, next week, we're better. Is that an argument no. or a fight? In a change room yeah. is like normal procedure. Yeah. Definitely. If you're going to be a successful team, even a team who's fighting relegation, if there's not a fight, physical or right proper argument in that change room, whether it's change room or on a training pitch, then there's something wrong with that squad, yeah. in my eyes. Oh, you can't have it hunky dory the whole time. Where's that passion? Not, passion doesn't mean fighting someone, but you've got to have that something in you that says, I'm not accepting this. And there's got to be other people in the dressing room that, that are behind you when that happens. And if someone's not pulling their weight, it needs to be told. And like I agree, I don't, in the Arsenal team, I don't know if someone if someone misses a chance. For instance, when Wazza used to miss a chance sometimes, because he loved missing a chance every now and again, right? But I would scream, and he'd just ignore me, and then he'd, he'd go, "Do your job," type thing. But like I wanted a reaction. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I know he, next time he gets the ball, not just because of me, but like someone else, he's going to be thinking, "I'll shut you up." And in his own personal pride, anyway, the, the top players they've got that personal pride that they want to do better anyway. Yeah, because I, I see that when also played Newcastle earlier in the season and uh, Giroud got in and he's trying to dink the goalkeeper. Mm. Like he's, he's pointing the goalkeeper's end. Last kick of the game. That yeah, he's yeah. pointing the goalkeeper's end and like no one said anything. Well, you, you come off the bench, you've been left out for a reason. Yeah. First thing you do is get it, you fizz in the bottom corner, you turn around mm. and say to yourself, oh, boss, leave me out next week now. Mm. Dinked in the keeper's end, the keeper's got it. Everyone said, OK, then let's just get on with it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Not in any team I'm playing in, by the way. Uh, if, if that's me or that's your, I'm letting them know, hey, mm. you know what you've got to do. But that's, that's their mentality. Well, yeah, we're good players and we, we do it in the end. And that has been Arsenal. Get to March, faded. Mm. Or next season. You know, I believe this team, I believe, I believe. Them Arsenal fans, fans are doing their nut because they, all he says is, I believe. And he keeps selling all the best players, but he keeps believing in what it would appear if it's a struggle uh, to get some of the best players to come here perhaps it's still possible to get some of the best managers if you think of the arrival of Jurgen Klopp this week yeah um, we're I'm at the game on on Saturday look really looking forward to that but I think he's got a tough job I think Liverpool are miles off it miles off it you know they've uh, is it FSG um, the owners yeah they've spent 410 million pounds since 2010 and out of that I would say 70 million's been well spent. You know, some of the players they've had through that football club, so it's not all down to Brendan Rodgers. The money they've spent is ridiculous. And I think Klopp's going to have to spend another 200, 300 million to get them anywhere near challenging for the title. I think, I think success for Liverpool now is Champions League football for the next three or four years. Because I think they're miles off winning the league. But the Liverpool fans are all buzzing because, yeah, and they got a buzz because he's done great for Dortmund. You know, but I think... They're not going to win the league. I just hope he's going to, if this, from what you read in the papers, I hope he's going to have the authority to, buy, have to sanction the players. Because yeah. it seems like, from what you're hearing, that Brendan wanted certain players, he wasn't allowed to get them. Then this, consult, uh, this, this group of guys who were the committee, in, the committee were, were, were buying players. And if you look at the players that were bought in that Liverpool team, Brendan Rodgers is someone who comes from Swansea, played out the back, wanted to play football. He seemed like he wanted to do that with, yeah. with Liverpool. And you go and buy Sacco, and Mignolet, who are starters in that team, 
along with Skirtle, and their, their best attribute isn't passing the ball. They're all good players in, in their own right, mm. but their best, if you're going to play a passing fluid I'm football I'm surprised from the back, you didn't go by Williams, mate. I said it. I That's said the it. one I would have gone and bought. Mm. Perfect for the way yeah, Brendan Rodgers yeah. played. He came out and said it was blocked. Yeah, three times he got yeah, blocked. Really blocked yeah. I think. I think the thing is as well with, with Klopp, and this is no disrespect to, to Brendan Rodgers at all. I think if you look at Liverpool, it's it's a huge pull. It's a massive football club. If you look at Liverpool, Brendan Rodgers is a huge pull. If you look at Liverpool Football Club with Klopp, it then becomes an even bigger pull. So I think what he may find is that he may be able to get an even higher highest standard of footballer now you know. like who before they would go to City before they would go to United before they would go to Chelsea. Arsenal I, who I, I think he, he could do because I, he, for who call it he's got the character uh, yeah that's the thing it's the it's character. character if Combined you're a top Liverpool. player why would you go to Liverpool before if you're a top player years gone back yes Liverpool no but Liverpool players go to Liverpool you could say the same about a lot of clubs you've got to support go, them go, yeah go, go to Liverpool and then they get Suarez gone you know, when he was at the top still. Yeah, yeah, got yeah. Selling so who, who yeah. are you going to go? If you're a top player now and you've got a choice with the top clubs, why would you choose Liverpool? But you, 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 you leave your top player, you go win things. Yeah, you look at it now, you turn around and say, so, OK, then, who, who is the top club in England now? I would say there's, there's still, with a chance of winning stuff, you've got to say City, Chelsea, Arsenal, because they've won the FA Cup the previous two years. So you've got three options. And I would say United, because that's the biggest so club. You've got, biggest four, club. you've got four options yeah. there, yeah? Five years ago, what were your options? Man United. <laughs> Simple as that. Simple as that. Not every not every player could come to Man United because even when Man, when players uh, I'd say Chelsea had the as option, well, probably. Yeah, had the yeah. option. They didn't all come to Man United, but like I said five years ago, Manchester United was a top club. They didn't get every single player. Hazard, they wanted Hazard, didn't get Hazard. Yeah. You know, so Robin. Yeah, you know, all the top clubs. I mean, all the top players still don't work come to top club. I think now with Klopp going there. That Absolutely. gives them more of an option, yeah, because... Players like yeah, what, he's, he's like who, character. like who, name, name, like who? Well, you know, the, the, the kid, he's had a, um, a Dortmund with him. Yeah, Royce, the yeah. striker, Royce, Royce and yeah. Aguirre Ag what his name is. I, 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 yeah, I, I, I believe, close. yeah, I know the word. Yeah. I, I believe, it's yeah, he's great. Klopp could get someone like that to sign for Liverpool. In fairness, he did a similar job with Dortmund, didn't he? He, mm -hmm. he found players that weren't necessarily at the top yeah. of everybody else's shopping list. And turn them into something greater yeah. than than. I, they I were think he's he great for the league. I think you need people's personalities like that. We, Mourinho came over the first time; he was a breath of fresh air. Says what he wants. You see Klopp's press conference; it was like it's right. box office. Yeah. You want to you want to tune in, and you hope there's going to be more moments <laughs> like that when he's suffered a defeat or something like that. It would be great, and just seeing him come out and speak. As we don't want Liverpool doing too well. But um, I think he's going to be. I think he's a great addition. I think he's a really good signing for yeah. them. When were the last players, the wow players? People say Suarez, but was he a wow player when he came from Ajax no. to Liverpool? I wouldn't say so. Torres possibly. You know who else has been a wow? But well, which was the last wow that's, player? No, that, that's you just hit, about the you, no, but, but you just did. Yeah. But you've hit the nail on the head. Suarez, he wasn't a wow player. No. But he left a wow player. Yeah. But who's but, the, down to who? Rogers possibly. Yeah, but look. But what we're saying is, look at what Klopp's done to these players. You know, the likes of Lewandowski. Yeah. Royce, Royce coming through the ranks. But I believe Liverpool need wow players to win the league. Gotcha. Yeah, but if, if you have a manager that can make these players top, top players. Well, Rodgers did Rogers have done well for you know what? Sterling, done well. You know what? And they nearly won the league. You talk about wow, the wow players, yeah? Bring your kids through. I don't think we've got time for that. I, I, I watched the play, Liverpool, Liverpool young players. You've got Rossiter. Are you going to win the league with Rossiter in the team? I don't think you are. Being honest, you know, he might be a good young player. Yeah, so you, you, you know, to your try. Mm. That, okay, you could say with the class of '92 was. The, no, but yeah. it's the players that you've got around them as well, isn't it? If if you bring young players into the team, as long as you've got the experience around them, then I think they can, they can flourish. But I think young lads coming through them, I think that's a completely different story. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's a given. The only thing that that, that, that makes me a little bit sceptical and not 100% convinced, from what I said before, is that you look at his last year at Dortmund. He didn't have the best of times there. No. And was that down to him? Was he just, did he go stout being at a club for so long? I don't know. So you'd hope he's shaken off that little bit of um, negative vibe that he would have had in the last, the last year at, at Dortmund. But it's not going to be an easy job for him. I don't think it's easy yeah. at all. I think it's going to be a really tough job. But turning the mentality around is going to be a big part, of it, which I think he's yeah, capable no, of. I've never got Rossiter. So he might be a good player. Right? <laughs> but, you know, might get a chance. But I don't think in this stage now you can put kids into the team 
because the competition with you know Chelsea will have a resurgence. They'll they'll finish in the top four. I believe Chelsea. So it's what an opportunity for Liverpool to finish in the top four this year. Because as as the boys have said, it's not the greatest Premier League. So if you're going to put kids in the team now, that's a big risk. Chelsea. Chelsea are a I think they'll finish at all. I think they've got too much quality. I know there's problems, but I think they'll finish top four. Mm. Who disagrees? Anyone? Well, I don't think I don't think the league's good enough for to, for anyone mm. to go on a run of fifteen games. But back in the days you would have seen teams Chelsea would have gone on a twenty twenty five game mm. run. City done it when they were winning the league. United were capable of doing that. I don't see none of them teams doing that this year. So again. what's wrong with Chelsea at the moment, do you think, as you see it? I don't know. I think they've I think Mourinho's quite a intense manager I think his first season they were getting things right very intense and they won the league last year and the difference of great teams is being able to replicate a season Man City haven't done it this Chelsea team doesn't like doing it and it's hard to do Chelsea's first first Mourinho team at Chelsea done it they won back to back titles it's a hard thing to do because mentally not just physically you've got to have a, a fair bit of luck with your injuries as well your most important player staying fit. Company can't stay fit. Aguero can't stay fit. Silver can't stay fit. Uh, um, there's a lot of changes in personnel in the first eleven at, at Chelsea, which is not normal for Mourinho to be doing. So them things are going against them. And this shows you and tells you: Are these great teams? Can you put Man the Man City team that won two league titles in three or four years? Can you say they're a great team? I don't think you can. They've not won back-to-back -back titles. See, one of the other things that most great managers get the accolade of doing is knowing when to turn over a great team, when to add and perhaps take away. Has he not revolutionised that, that very good-looking Chelsea team a year ago enough? By, by all sounds, he's, like, he's had a go at it. And for whatever reason, Mourinho always, always seems to get himself in a position where he gets blocked for bringing in certain players. And then um, he all spits his dummy out, makes everyone knows he's trying to bring in certain individuals in, and it's not worked out for him like, like the Stones one. I mean, the Stones, Stones one would have been a great acquisition because the kid's a talented kid. I, would, let, I would never let that happen if I was my United manager. Well, yeah. I would have done that. Because you, you know the quality, yes. But you look at that, if he brings him in and some of the players he muted that he tried to bring in in the summer, that changes things around, you know. And he's all saying, right, I can edge out certain individuals slowly but surely because this one looks to bring through. That's why Alex Ferguson was the best there. You know, you win a championship, last game of the season or whatever it may be, Forget about it. It's gone. I don't care now. I'm thinking about next season. Mm. You're still buzzing. He's still thinking about, right, what plays can I bring in? Right, I've already lined him up. He's lined up, brought in. Next season, you could have four or five faces. He addressed you. You're saying, so, I thought my team was half decent, by the way. He's thinking, well, you were, but now moving to the next level. That's why Man United have been so strong over previous years under, under Salix Ferguson and, and dominate the Premiership for so many years. So will Mourinho get that chance? Will he, and will he be given that kind of... Latitude. I think it's more a case of whether he wants to, to be honest with you, because he doesn't, he doesn't stay, stay places for very long. And I think the thing is, is when, when you have a Premier, Premier League winning team, the difficult thing is, is that you are the best team in the league and the teams that are behind you, they know to a certain extent what they need, the players that they need to bring in. And I think what Mourinho's done, he's gone about this season exactly the same as last season, trying to play, play the same way, but teams are starting to become clued up with them. People talk about Ivanovic lost his pace, John Terry lost his pace. I don't think they've lost any pace from last season. I think it's a simple fact that last season they were the dominant force, especially in midfield with Matic and Fabregas. They used to boss all the midfield. So if they did lose the ball, they'd lose it in the opposition final third and it was never a problem. Now teams are swarming on top of them, getting the ball off them you know, near the halfway line and the back four of Chelsea has pushed so high that there's that space in behind them now. And I think that's more to do with And that's where Mourinho, I'm surprised with Mourinho because... I've always looked at him in a manager over the years to be one of the best tacticians around and for him to see something and go, right, OK, you know what, this isn't working, so we need to play that a little bit deeper. Everton away was a prime example. They played a higher line oh, than, than Everton did. And Everton were the home team and were the dominant team, yet Chelsea just kept getting done in behind. If you look at the players that have stood out against Chelsea this season, the likes of um, Zaha for Crystal Palace, the lad at Swansea, the left winger, yeah. Ripped Ivanovic to pieces, Montero. Didn't Montero. They didn't have that space to do that last season. But teams have worked out, Chelsea, and that's why you have, that's why I like what Rio's saying, you have so much respect for these teams that can win a league, then win it the next year and the next year, because they have the same players or they'll bring better players in, but there'll always be slight adjustments as well because teams will get found out. So you're saying Mourinho's tactically in net then? <laughs> I'm saying that I'm surprised with him you, 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 know, you know, you, you say that, yeah. He wants his back four to get up. And I, Mourinho's the kind of guy that he'll do things like that because he knows that the game's moved on again. 
He knows now you need pace at the back. He's the kind of person who will say, OK, then I want my team, I want the boys up to get up from the back now. Yeah. Knowing that, really, they can't, exposes it. He's hanging a few to make a point. Yeah. Mm. I think that's what he done at the beginning yeah. of the season, definitely. He wanted, he wanted, yeah, he wanted uh, a couple of players issue. and he, to force the issue, he wanted to expose it and make the yep. chairman see. But I think another big part of it is when you win a league and you want to go again, you bring in a world-class player to reinvigorate that dressing room again, to say it. And what that does is when that player walks in, you all sit there, Berbatov come in, he was the best player at Spurs, probably the best player in the league that year. Um, it happened with Robin Van Persie. These players come in and all change and look at each other and go, I need to show him now why I'm here, why I've been here all this time, why I've got more league titles than you. I'll show you on that training pitch and on Saturday why. And then the levels stay and go up. Chelsea this season didn't do that. Last season they bought Fabregas, they bought Diego Costa, done their business quick, early. Mm. Other players thought, well, we are on this, we've got a chance now. This season, Dilly Dallian didn't get their business done and you can see that may be playing a part in, in why we're there right now. That's what Derby thought when I walked in the dressing room. <laughs> 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 <Didn't that know? laughs> yeah, uh, we'll leave that one there. Uh, is that what Man City have done? Is that in, in terms of De Bruyne and, and, and Sterling, have they reinvigorated perhaps the older, more established yeah, figures? They, I, think, I think they have done that, but I think also as well that like, he, Pellegrini left himself wide open in Europe last season. You know, he was, he, he, he's one of the only managers still to be playing 4-4-2, which he can play. You play 4-4-2, but not when you're without the ball as well. And that's what he was doing. And we saw, you know, early in his tenure, getting battered by Bayern Munich at home, getting dominated in midfield. Napoli, Dortmund. All Sorry? Napoli, Dortmund. Yeah, they, they, all, they all dominated in midfield. And I think now what he's done, he's looked and he's thought, right, if I'm going to get the best out of the players, I've got to play him in the best positions. He's changed the situation. He plays a 4-2-3-1 now. He gives Torre the licence to run from deep. Fernandinho sits in. He's got two flyers either side of Silva. You know, he's got Sterling, he's got Aguero who's quick as well. And you can have De Bruyne on Navas. Obviously, it's going to be De Bruyne on the other side. So all of a sudden, he's got, he's got that good balance. And when they lose the ball, it then becomes a 4-5-1. Whereas I think earlier in his tenure, it, they were just getting dominated in midfield by teams they shouldn't have been getting Because before they played, they'd play Silva and Nasri. Mm -hmm. and Torre and, was and, one other. and Fernando and there's only one defender there one really the to defend. do it. so that was why they were getting battered yeah. if they play it right though they, they've got the best squad by a mile definitely the most complete squad and they should walk this league if they stay fit and they play it right tactically they should win this league by us at the beginning they, they should win this by seven or eight points mm -hmm. minimum if, if they play it right the, the, on, the, only con the only concerning thing is which is that you look at company no doubt about it he's an outstanding centre back one of the best around in world football but when he's missing, the whole team goes to pieces. I'm They've not spent sure. I'm not no. sure. I'm not sure, no. What? I'm not sure if the, whole, if the whole team goes to pieces. I mean, defensively, they go to if, pieces. If you look at his form to the back end of last season, I think at times, yeah, Tim Michaelis, he was a better centre half. Mm. Yeah. And he was getting them through a game. I think company was getting to a stage where he was being very rash. He was thinking about his own performances. Your manager doesn't leave your captain out of your team if he doesn't believe you're playing well. Yeah. And in the end, Pellegrini's left him out of the team. You know, I know he's struggling with injuries. That if you're struggling with injuries, you've got to hold your hand up and say, OK, then if someone's fit than me, let them play. I think you're going back to defenders oh. now. We talked about it before. Yeah. I don't see a genuine world-class defender who's been consistent for, for, for three, let alone five or six years at the top of the game. You look at the Madrid centre-half, Ramos has done, done well a couple, a couple of years, maybe, sporadically. Over, he's done well for, when they won the Champions League. He was brilliant. But then after, as a dip company he had a couple of great years and then he's had a, a couple of years dip wise Thiago Silva before the World Cup I think that killed him off the World Cup yeah, playing yeah. with David Luiz and stuff and they together they just wasn't doing it at all but I don't look around and see maybe the Avengers uh, team which was obviously successful last season but they often play with the three mm -hmm. yeah but not one of them yeah. stood out I, I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to say which one was a great yes was uh, over the last 10 15 20 years you've always been around to look around Nesta Fabio uh, Carnavaro, Yap Stam, yeah. Maldini, you could no, you just rule them off. It's, it's, not, it's not the same that I don't, that, I don't know the art of defending. It's not it's about gone. playing well for one year. It's not about playing well the odd game. Early. It's about doing it over a sustained period to be genuinely called, I think, a world class player. Say what, Clint Hill and Richard Dunn must have been good players, eh? Oh, they were unbelievable. <laughs> seriously, my legs are gone. <laughs> no, but seriously, but, but what I'm saying to you is that, but listen, look at Dunny. 
And he's a, a solid player. He was player. a good player. He, he, wanted to defend, though, don't he wants to defend. That's the thing. That's and he, 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 he's quick. Yeah, in his yeah. time, he was a good. He, he was that a lack of coaching or lack of ability for for defenders or? Why is this dirt? I don't know. I think it's defenders. I think everyone, like we spoke about before, with all social media, with so much access to cameras and stuff like that, now everyone wants to see the beautiful game. They want to see the goals, the strikers, the the, the skills, the fairy tale football. And is who's that, the best centre half? Now in the world now. Yeah. In the Premier League, it's Ashley Williams. I don't care what no one says. There's no one been as consistent over the last four years with Ashley Williams. Last year, John Terry was the best in the league. Ashley would have been second. The year before that, I don't know, he would have been probably, maybe, I don't know, company at a push, maybe. Ashley would have been second off. I think that on, on social media there, the European qualifying team was part, wasn't it? I don't know yeah. who voted for it. And Ashley Williams was the centre-half. Yeah, Cahill, Cahill the year before last was one of the better centre-halves. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's, it's always never the same type of two or three people you're talking about. Other than Ashley Williams, you've been in the top three for me the last three or four years. Good time to be a Welshman. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, amazing. No, now he's retired, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's not a coincidence, yeah, yeah, yeah. Colin. It's not a coincidence. <laughs> the, um, yeah, amazing achievement. Uh, Wales and Northern Ireland. Um, mm. You know, I've said it. You know, Wales have kept I think five clean sheets out of the last six. They conceded two in Bosnia, but the, um, down to Ashley Williams, Hennessy's played magnificent. You know, people like Gunter. You know, playing the championship when they pull that red shirt on, they grow. They they, they look world beaters. They just they got a great team spirit. Midfield Ramsey, and to be fair to Ramsey, you know, he's, he probably says himself hasn't performed great in a Wales shirt in recent time over the last four or five games, but got the goal against Andorra and, and looked back to his best in a Welsh shirt and the standout player, Bale. You know, the 11 goals in the group, he scored seven and assisted three. So I would say Wales, with Ashley Williams as a centre-half, you know, with Ramsey and Joe Allen and, and added to the players around them when they play for Wales, growing stature, if you've got a superstar in Bale, which he is a superstar, and can win matches on his own, you've got a chance. Why not? But I would say if he gets injured and doesn't make the Euros, Wales has got no chance. That's how important he is. I wouldn't want to play Wales in a, in a no. get into a yeah. tournament. You wouldn't want to play Wales. Well. If you, they come out of the well. pot, you'd be thinking, I'd like to skip You're that. You're in the bottom yeah. tier as well, aren't they? They're the, yeah. they're the, yeah. the dangerous yeah. floater, yeah. as they... There's, yeah. there's a togetherness about them as well, aren't there? Yeah. There's no... In, all right, yeah, you've got Gareth Bale, who's a world-class player, and the likes of Ramsey as well, and, and Williams, but they're not individual players. Mm. There's, there's a collective team spirit. And, you know, we've seen with Wales, we've seen with Northern Ireland, what that can achieve. You know, OK... Wales, yes, they've got Gareth Bale, but other than that, it's a collective side of fantastic players that, as a unit, very, very difficult I to break down. I think fundamentally as well, going into the mm. campaign, because the 24 teams, you know, you think we can get the player from third place. So when Wales group come out, you're thinking, right, and Belgium, you're thinking, Bo I thought Bosnia would have done better mm, with Dzeko. Yeah, yeah, and then definitely. you're looking at it, you're thinking, right, Andorra, Cyprus and Israel. With Bale, Ramsey, Ashley Williams in the team, before the group starts, you're thinking, we've got half a chance here. And I think that they gave them confidence before they started. You know, the people say about the team I played in 2003 when we lost to Russia. You know, if it would have been the same th thing now, 24 teams would have qualified because we finished second to Italy. You know, we had Serbia, we had Finland, who had, you know, Yari Lippmann, and I think at the mm -hmm. time, Mikel Fossell. So at the start, we were thinking, oh, second, will we do great to get second here. So the mentality going in with the extra teams in the Euros, I think, helped Wales. And mm -hmm. what you can say is that in my team, we had Ryan Giggs, superstar no question about it and they've got Bale I think if I'm being you know Bale when he pulled on the Welsh shirt the red shirt Wales produced more magic moments and scored important goals Wales Giggs he didn't mm. Giggs listen they're both superstars but you know Giggs you might say well he who's was better able, what? who's better who's better it's a very good question real Cole who's better <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I'll be honest with you, I'll play with Giggs I think Giggs is phenomenal so I've got to say Giggs He's a phenomenal player. Phenomenal player. People forget how gig, good Giggs yeah, was, man. When you watch videos of Rooney, he was incredible. Phenomenal when you watch Giggsy the, when he took his shirt off, Giggs was amazing. People yeah. forget the longevity, you know. But Bale is. Oh, that goal against Barcelona in that final. Oh, wow. yeah, it's a phenomenal goal. He ran off the pitch, yeah, yeah ran around the linesman. I think in a minute, if you no, judge no. it now, you'd have to say Giggsy, wouldn't you? But what well, Giggsy at his best against uh, Bale at his best now? Who's better? Bale ain't finished yet, has he? Bale, I don't reckon Bale's at his best yet. No. Oh, I, reckon oh, he's got another two, I reckon he's got another two years. Yeah. Forget how good Giggs he was, though. Out there, well, back here at United, I think. 
And how do you see England next summer? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope they do well. But the problem is, the last tournament, not a lot has changed. I think we're getting, we're getting blinded by this qualifying and this record. They played against bang average teams. One thing that has happened is you've had young players who are very inexperienced going into the last tournament. They've gained a lot of experience now. And you'd like to think that that would hold them in good stead to come into this tournament. But I just don't see... They come up against an Italy. They come up against a, um, a Germany, Spain, France. Any team of that... Even a Wales, I think they'd find it hard to beat Wales. I just think it's, there's, there doesn't seem that big shift from where they were before for me to go, wow, they, I think we've really, to be really optimistic and say they've got a good chance. That's the problem. And I don't, up, up front, I still, I still don't think he knows his best team. That's a big problem. You look at the best teams, what the Spain team goes out there, uh, you, could tell, you could say the first nine players straight away. Mm. The, main, the, the, the England team, I think you should, all of us up here would have a different first 11 completely. I think one of the things you've got to look at as well, you know, you bring Wales into this, you know, you look at Germany, you look at Spain, you look at Belgium. What they've done in Wales, I think, have done this really well. They've brought players through the system together. You know, there's, there's lads playing at Belgium, right? You take Ashley Williams out of the equation, he's a little bit older. But I think nine or ten of the team have been between the age of 24 to 26. So they've probably been playing together at international level from the age of 16. There's an understanding there. You know, Germany did it. You know, they, they forsaked one of the World Cups. Spain did it, the golden generation there. Belgium have done it now as well. They find themselves ranked number one in the world. Belgium ain't winning it. No, no they're not going to win it. I don't I think don't so. Think he, he, he's got to cement them. He's got to make them more of a yeah, team. I don't think they're a team yeah. Where, whereas I look at England, and I think you see in, I did the under 21s in the summer, and what was unbelievable was England had in their under 21 squad, they had the most under 21 caps out of every team that were in there, but the least top flight appearances for that season. Mm. So there's an, there was like a conveyor belt, and you see Belgium doing that, Wales doing that. And that's why Wales are having a success. They've got great players, but they've got lads that know each other inside out, and that's what we're talking about, the togetherness on the football pitch. I, I was on the FA Commission, and this was a big issue that we were discussing. It's like Ross Barkley. For two years, Ross Barkley has been with the England first team and made a very, very limited amount of appearances. He's last, this campaign, he's made a few nights, but he's starting to build up a few appearances. But beforehand, he's a genuine under-21 player, is underage can play but he's going and sitting on the bench or in the stands for the England first team training with the England national team great but you need to play you need to go out and play on the pitch these young guys need to go to tournaments and experience a tournament yeah. before going to a tournament almost there's only some players a handful you've got to be special to be able to just go into a tournament like Michael Owen and say it like, like that like Wayne Rooney you've got to be special there ain't many of them hanging about now we'll come back to that at a future day before we go give me a Premier League, Champions League and Euros winner I said Chelsea at the beginning, but they've, uh, they've had a bad start. Man City, I'd say, when it's killing me to say that. Um, say again, Champions League, yeah. Barca, I think they'll be the first team to retain it. And what else? Euros. Euros. Mm. Mm. France at home will be hard to beat. Okay. Carly? I went for Chelsea to start the season. You're changing as well? No, I'm going to stay with them. You can't <laughs> stay with them. <laughs> you, only, man. You, man. you can't <laughs> stay with them. That's stubborn, man. That's stubborn. Oh, man. You know I'm a stubborn man. Oh, you can't stay stubborn. with Chelsea. He's not going to change. Stick in. Yeah. You are stubborn. They'll finish third. Bumps. Champions League? Champions League, Barcelona, I think they deserve to be the first team to do to it. it. Yep. Yeah. And the Euros? <sighs> Real touched on France being a home team, but I can't look. The Germans. I'm going for Manchester City as well for the Premier League. Um, the Euros, I'm going to say Germany. And I think the Champions League, I think Bayern Munich. Good defines, yeah. Mm. Sign off for Guardiola. Mm -hmm. he heads this way. Rob? Well, because Corley made a ridiculous statement <laughs> and stuck with his Chelsea, I'm going to stick with United. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, I don't think the man Coley made a statement, so I'll make one. United. Um, You're sticking with that, yeah? I'm going to have to, you know. Um, we, we don't change all the time like that. Um, um, I'm going to go with Bayern, Champions League, and the Euros. Um, I think there'll be a surprise. Wales? No, I don't think Wales will win it. No, well, like a Greece type yeah, thing. No, not a chance. No, not a Greece. No, not a Greece. Not a chance. Like um, ooh. Iceland. No, but I think it's going to be a good. I think it's a really open tournament. Mm. Like the Premier League is open this year. I think the, the the Euros. It's a great time to be in it and a great time to win it. But I would say I'm with 
Germany, and we call it tournament football, Germany. It's what I look forward to. I think there's going to be a surprise, and it? it's a great time to go there because yeah. it's so open. But I'm going to go for Germany. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I knew you'd be. I knew you'd be listening. I'm just checking you're listening. <laughs> See, he does listen to what I say. He's got, he's got Wills on his head. And on yeah. that blonde bombshell, <laughs> we'll call it quits. Um, perhaps a small show of appreciation for what you've heard. <laughs> Terrific stuff. Thank you very much uh, for your company. I hope you've enjoyed it. You can, of course, download the app Breathe Sport. You can go to the website if you want to get involved on a daily basis. You'll hear more from the likes of this lot as the months unfold. A season still to play. Lots to look forward to. Next time we're talking about Messi and Ronaldo, yeah? Please, who's the best? Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, we'll, right. we'll get back to you. All right, cool. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, see you soon.